So in this video, let's finally talk about the widely used JPEG image compression standard. JPEG is actually an abbreviation for Joint Photographic Experts Group, which is a standardization committee by the ISO, and their image compression standard was already published in 1992. JPEG is a lossy compression standard, significantly reducing the data while still maintaining the perceptual quality for the human eye. This compression standard has been specifically developed for natural images and the chosen encoding techniques are based on three core observations. The first observation is that in natural images the content in small areas typically does not vary a lot and we can exploit this spatial redundancy in small blocks of 8 times 8 pixels. The second observation is that humans are less likely to notice the loss of high spatial frequencies which means that we can discard them via quantization. And finally, humans are also much more sensitive to brightness changes or luminance changes and less sensitive to missing color information, which means that we can reduce the fidelity of chroma components with color subsampling. In this slide, you can see the block diagram of JPEG encoding, which consists of seven basic steps. It starts with image scaling, followed by color space transform from RGB to YCBCR. Then there is subsampling of chroma components, which discards a lot of color information and is the first true lossy part of JPEG. After that, blocks of 8 times 8 pixels are formed and fed into a DCT transform, which is followed by quantization and finally entropy coding. And as you can see here by the red color in this diagram, Quantization is also the second lossy step where a lot of information is discarded. Now let's go further into detail with each of these steps. Image scaling is necessary because the entire process, and in particular the DCT, works on 8x8 blocks. So this first step checks if the width and height of an image are divisible by 8, and if not, they are extended to the next multiple of 8 by simply copying the last column to the right or the last row down. You can see the result for a 57 times 57 image here, which is expanded by this step to 64 times 64 pixels. After image scaling, we convert the color space of the pixels from RGB to YCBCR. And the reason for this is the next step, which subsamples the color or chrominance components. For chroma subsampling, as you can see in the slide, there are several modes. For example, 444. 422 and 420, which is the default for JPEG. The three numbers represent luminance and both chrominance components and express how many values are sampled for Y, C, B, and C, R. So for example, 444 means that for four luminance values, we also sample four C, B and four C, R values, while 422 means that we would only sample two C, B and two C, R values. Now finally, 420 means that for four luminance values we only sample one CB and one CR value. There is also a 411 subsampling scheme, which means that in every row chrominance is sampled only for every fourth pixel, but in every row, or in other words horizontally, while 420 means that the chrominance subsampling is done horizontally and vertically, as you can see here in the lower part of the picture. Now, of course, at the decoder, the color values are reconstructed and basically just copied from the sampled value. But since the human eye is less sensitive to color changes, we typically do not notice this missing color change from one pixel to another. And you can also verify this here on the previous slide, which shows that CB and CR have very low frequency, meaning that there are not a lot of value changes in small regions. On the next two slides, we can see the difference between 444 and 420 subsampling in this reconstructed image. And in fact, the differences are really small and can only be noticed by a very high zoom level. It is important to understand that 420 subsampling, as used by JPEG, is lossy and effectively reduces the data already to a half, because we have only one quarter for CB and one quarter for CR. After color subsampling, we create 8 times 8 blocks of pixels and combine 4 such Y blocks with the corresponding CB and CR blocks. And this combination is known as a macro block, 
which is the processing unit for all further steps in the JPEG encoding scheme. For our blocks, we then perform a forward DCT, discrete cosine transform, and thereby convert from spatial pixel domain to the frequency domain. And the resulting frequency coefficients are then divided by quantization value in the next step, which produces quantized frequency coefficients and uh, is performed with quantization matrices in such a way that the CT coefficients on the upper left are divided by small values, while coefficients on the lower right are divided by large values, effectively discarding high frequency components in a block. We can see this on slide 44 and 45 for an example block of the LENA image that consists of luminance values around 200. The resulting frequency coefficients are already very low on the lower right for this block because the content is pretty homogeneous. After quantization, the majority of the coefficients become zero and this can be efficiently stored while the reconstructed, scaled and inverse transform block at the decoder produces pixel values very similar to the original block, as we can see here in this example on the slide. In fact, most of the reconstructed pixel values here are only plus minus two or plus minus one off. The effect of quantization or the impact of the number of DCT coefficients can be seen on this slide, where a smooth image is reconstructed when all coefficients are used, while a very choppy image is const constructed when only one DCT coefficient is used, which would result in the same color value for each pixel in the eight times eight pixel block. However, it is also visible that already three, and in particular six top left coefficients produce a very close result to the example using all 64 coefficients. Since natural images typically contain large homogeneous areas, it is very probable that the lower right coefficients are zero. And this is the reason why before using entropy coding, the JPEG algorithm employs a six sex scan of coefficients which often results in long runs of zeros in the end. Now the entropy coding can effectively utilize these long runs of zero by using a run length coding scheme for AC coefficients, which uses tuples that contain the number of zeros in the run and the next non-zero AC coefficient. So for example, the AC sequence of six, minus one, minus one, zero, minus one, zero, 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 and so on, would be represented by the tuples 0, 6, 0, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 3, minus 1, and so on and so forth. Since the value range of DC coefficients is much different, they are not encoded by run length coding, but with a differential PCM coding scheme that considers all DC values of consecutive blocks. So for example, if the DC values of a few blocks are 150, 155, 149, and so on. Only the first value would be entirely coded, but for the others, only the difference to the previous value would be stored, which results in 150 for the first value, but five and minus six and so on for the next few values. Finally, in the end of the encoding process, Huffman coding or arithmetic coding is used in order to encode the resulting values from runland coding and DPCM coding. So this is it for this video. Thanks very much for watching.